for the amazing story we have for you today. Namaste to Ruby Raza. Nice to see someone in the field listening to other people in the field. Namaste to Manu. You're listening to the Mixed Masala Show here with Hansi. We're talking to Chan about her amazing journey and her weight loss journey, where it, uh, how it all happened in the first place, what was her trigger points, and what made her finally do something about it. Chan, how are you doing? All right? Yes, good, thank you. So the stories were quite, um, well, <laughs> you told me about the embarrassing stories and what your daughter thought and things like that. So that, that must be quite deep in there and uh, triggered something off. Now I'd like to know, what was your first step when you decided, right, I'm going to do something now. What is it that you actually did? Um, so that day in the park, I came home and I thought, this has to change. So I literally got a black bin bag emptied out all the cupboards of all the junk, took everything out in the freezer that was junk and it all went in the bin. Wow. Because I thought I have to be serious and it's not a case of, oh, I'm going to start so I have to finish all the junk in the house and That's then I'm going to start shopping. That's what I do. Shopping. I actually think no. I better finish it because no. I don't want to waste it. <laughs> uh, my, head, Indian. It was, my head was so, at that point, was like, this is it. I have mm. to do this. Mm. And I, yeah, I came home and everything went in the bin. Right. And then, and then I, I, I went out shopping and bought all healthy, read the ingredients. I looked online about nutrition. I didn't have a clue about nutrition. I didn't know about food labels. Sure. Um, so yeah, then I started uh, documenting everything what I ate. So, so like a food diary type kept of thing. A food diary, yeah, yeah. Um, so I did that for about three months. Okay. And I think in the, in the space of three to four months, I lost about two stones. So, <laughs> okay, and that's quite a lot, isn't it? In the yeah. short space of time. And that's just from really not eating the, the, the fatty foods and, yeah. and, and buying the healthy ones mm. and still eating three times? Still eating healthy? Probably more. I think I was eating more <laughs> really? because I was eating healthier. Right. So, you know, I, I, I was snacking healthier. I was making sure I had breakfast, lunch and dinner. Yeah. So I actually felt like, I never felt hungry. I okay. did feel like I was always oh. mm. full. Well, that's a good sign, isn't it, for anyone who's sort of struggling to... Because the first thing normally people think, diet, okay, I'm going to feel hungry all the time. And subconsciously, because you put it in your head, you sometimes, I find, I think more about food uh, than I would ordinarily because I've decided, I've said to my mind, you know, you're dieting, so now you're not going to get any. Yeah. And suddenly you want more than you actually uh, would ordinarily. So it's good that you're saying you didn't feel hungry just from changing uh, your diet. And so what happened after that? Um, so the weight loss... It was quite quick to start off with and then once I kind of felt like my diet was fine, I couldn't fine tune that anymore. Right. I needed to sort of, I, I decided I needed to do more to keep the weight coming off because the two stone wasn't anywhere near what my goal was. So I joined the gym Yeah. and um, I signed up for two years. I didn't because I thought I'm not going to do this pay one month at a time because that, that wasn't enough for me in the past. Yeah. So I needed a commitment. So I thought, right, I'm paying up front for two years. So there's no way I'm... Yeah. yeah, so the fact that you'd paid was your incentive to make yeah. use of your money effectively. Definitely, yeah. Right, yeah, right, okay. And, and, and you, you managed to just motivate yourself? Um, at um, first, yeah, because I really enjoyed going to the gym. So I, I, I mean, the first few weeks I, I didn't know what I was doing, but then I started getting to the, to the habit and copying what other people were doing. Yeah. Um, so that went on for a little while, but then I did get to a point, sort of three, four months later, where I was just really bored. Yeah. I didn't... And, and well, gym can't always, can't, are not really that exciting places, I would say, are they? I mean, from now, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I couldn't stay out of the gym, but I think there was no structure in my workouts. So right. I was going to the gym and I was thinking, oh, what's available? What machines are available? What should I do? There was no, I had no focus, I had no goal. Right. Um, so, so what did you do at that point? I mean, who so set your goal for you? I, I met somebody at the gym, he was a personal trainer, but he, he'd also, there was a lot of personal trainers there, but I picked him because he'd also lost a hell of a lot of weight. Okay. Uh, you know, a lot of weight. So he's so, been through that journey already. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I kind of felt like he understood where I was coming from. He knew that I had limitations. I was still quite big. So, I, you know, other personal trainers were putting their clients through so much and I, it scared me. I, did, I, I wouldn't have been able to do that. Sure. And you said you were still quite big. So I'm, based on my mathematics, you're sort of now 40, it was about, you lost two or three. Mm -hmm. uh, so about 14 stones at this point yeah, when you went to the gym. stones, yeah. Okay. And um, you, you said about structure. So what was that? Was it, was it a program? You know? Um, what he did was he, he 
where I was focusing on, I want to be like 10 stone, 9 stone, and I saw that as my goal, my end goal. Mm -hmm. I think that was kind of the reason I felt demotivated because I felt like it was such a long way away. Right. So he broke it down into small, smaller yeah. chunks. Manageable pieces. Yeah. And he set a workout plan for each goal. So it was. It wasn't. I wasn't just focusing on the weight. I was working. Well, I was focusing on my fitness. So I was like, how fast can I run? How much can I lift? Right. Um, how quickly can I perform a certain exercise? So was that so, measured for you as you were yeah. going along each time? Yeah. Yeah. So that's something I look back on, and he also taught me about taking pictures, sort of yes. looking at my, you know, myself in the mirror, seeing where I can see changes. And I've seen some of those pictures actually, uh, yeah, on your Facebook page, yeah. so you can actually see a little bit of a journey as to, mm. you know, oh, well, how did you feel when you look back at some of those? Did you think was I really that size? I can't remember being that big. I mean, it's <laughs> such a long time. I really, I always, I've kept some clothes, so occasionally I'll pull a pair of jeans out <laughs> and there's a picture of me on my Facebook page where I'm holding a yes, pair of jeans. I've seen that. The they two do, people could get in there, don't we? We do, but they actually were too tight for me because right. they were size 24 and I used to have to lay on the bed and literally oh, really yeah. struggle with a zip and, and even when I had them on, walking was just a nightmare. I couldn't sit down in them, so I'd probably wear them for an hour, two hours. Yeah, I mean, Chen, you're smiling now, and, and we're, we're having a laugh about, you know, two people fitting in the, those pair of, um, those trousers and things like that. Yeah. But what, what was going through your mind? I mean, as uh, at this point, for example, because you spoke about your mind with the, with the trigger points. Now you're sort of two or three stones down. Um, what was happening in your mind then? Were there other emotional, things going on? Um, I feel like I could see a difference in what I could in my abilities and what, what I could do but I still didn't feel like I'd achieved that much. Yeah. So I still felt like oh, I've, st I've still got a lot of work to do but I did feel when I did reach certain goals like fitness goals or, or weight loss goals yeah, I, I did feel a big sense of achievement. Um, and when you were at the gym, what did what was it exactly that you did? Was it just cardio, um, weights, go to classes? Because some people find classes more fun and mm -hmm. things like that. Would that be enough? I did it. I did a bit of everything. I mean, my main goal, my main focus was weight training. I, I really enjoyed weight training. I saw the biggest changes in my body through weight changing. So uh, weight training, sorry. So that was something that I really enjoyed. And I, I, I actually took up boxing. Um, I did that for about six years. Yeah, boxing. Boxing. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. really enjoyed that. I tried that once. It wasn't kickboxing actually. It was. It was just boxing. You That's know, right. and it was one of the classes, yeah. and it just happened accidentally. Actually, I went to the gym at a different time to normal, and I thought, okay, what class is on? And it was. It was this boxing. I thought, okay, normally you associate boxing with you know strong, big men, and not for little girls. But it was so much fun, you know. And yeah. therapeutically, it was not that I'm a violent person or anything but I could pretend I was punching yeah. or getting my anger right. out on people and frustrations yeah. and actually I found that quite therapeutic uh, just doing that yeah. so uh, it's a great big stress reliever and it's also it's a toning exercise as well as cardio so you do see a lot of changes in your arms and after my first class I was aching in places I didn't know you could ache right, so right. for me that was like that that brought me back sure again and again well, it seems like you did a whole mixture of things. In terms of our listeners, I, I, I guess there's no one right for anybody. Is it a case of going, you know, going along and finding the right type of exercises? Because you've got to keep doing it, and discipline and motivation, I find, is the most hardest thing. Mm. Um, there must have been down days. I did all the time. You know, when the, when the weight's coming off, it's not going to be a case of the weight's going to come off every single week. You're going to weigh yourself, and you would have lost weight. You're going to be you would have plateaus. I, I hit so many plateaus, and those were the times where I thought, you know what, this is it. I've this, I've hit a point where I'm not going to lose any more. Um, but I still wasn't happy with my size. I must have been on a size 16, 14, 16. Um, but I, I, by having this trainer and my mentor, I found that it's those times where you really need to focus on your goal. And he made me write down what I wanted to achieve, why I wanted to achieve it, and every day focus on that. Sure. So, and that kept me going, and also having someone to be that you felt accountable to as well ha ha made a big difference for me. Okay. So, I guess some, for some people who are struggling, if they're not finding the motivation themselves, is to maybe get somebody else involved, or like you say, have something that's going you're going to be held accountable. Yeah. Uh, maybe a person or 
you know, a, a child email, anyone that yeah. you've got to go and say, well, actually, I did this today or yeah. I haven't done this today and feel yeah. hopefully feel a bit guilty if you haven't. Mm. Yeah, make it a team effort. Yeah, okay, so it's about getting people in your lives involved. You don't have to do it all on your own. Certainly when you're coming from exactly where you were to now, Chan. We're going to go back to some of the favorite Bollywood songs here at Radio Harrow. And uh, we're going to finish off uh, with you with another one or two more questions because we do have a competition to tell everybody about. And I also like to know, you know, where you, what you're exactly doing now and uh, what the future holds for you. So we'll come back to you later on, Chan. Well, the time has gone so quickly that's because Hunsi's not on her own help on her own today yes I've been talking to Chan about her journey her weight loss journey from weighing around 16 and a half stone to about nine and a half now that's a size 24 to a size 10 absolutely amazing I'm sure different people have different uh, challenges in their life um, Chan if there was one message you could give uh, our listeners out there today uh, what would it be the most important message I think is is to do it for yourself and you know ha have your goal in mind and do it for yourself. It could be because um, you know you want to achieve a certain weight or a certain look for a special event, but just keep focus on it and, and just reinforce that goal every single day and why you want to do it. So when you say a goal, do you mean like an event? Because you had your wedding, but it was initially a, a, a time set, you know, there's a date, there's an event, and you're thinking, by this time I want to be in a, in a certain position. Is that what you mean? Yeah, I set, I, yeah I set goals all throughout my weight loss journey. I mean, I still set goals for myself. Um, my new goal is I'm going to tackle Mount Snowdon. Wow. So That's, that's a big to, one. I need to train for that, yeah. So <laughs> if you're training towards something, then your workouts never become boring because you sure. know, like I, my, I always know what I'm going to do in the gym tomorrow morning because I know I need to get fit to climb this, this mountain. So, you know, you're always changing things up. And do you always have to sort of, I guess, renew the goals every time you've done one thing? Are you suddenly now, have you got a bit addicted to this yes. where you think, I, what do I do next? Definitely, definitely. <laughs> well, I think it's a good addiction to have. Um, do you start setting bigger and bigger challenges each time? Because Snowden is quite a big challenge yeah. from just losing weight. <laughs> I could, I could do it, and I think, and I want, and, and I think, I want Kieran to be proud of me. Kieran's my daughter, yeah, and I want her to. I don't think she could do it at this age at the moment, but I want her to look back on it and go, oh, "Mummy did that, so I want, I want to have a go." Well, absolutely, uh, we're setting an example, isn't yeah. it? And uh, there's no better way than actually. Uh, a live example as opposed to verbally telling someone yeah. they should do something and why it's sure. not always enough is it mm. okay Chan it's been really good talking to you and we really are running out of time there's about five minutes left to the show now and uh, there's a few more messages I'd like to give up to our listeners um, you mentioned a change of career right at the beginning so what is it that you do now so uh, alongside um, the massage I'm Health and fitness is now an obsession for me. So, yeah, and I'm right at the beginning of my journey when I started to see the difference through all the failures that I'd had, I made a promise to myself that if, if I was successful this time, then I would do everything that I could to help others right. that were in my position sure. way back then. Um, and so that's why I've set up um, Slim Sumo, which is my health and fitness website. Slim Sumo. Slim Sumo, yeah. <laughs> So I used to be a sumo, <laughs> and now <laughs> you're slim. No <laughs> I can see how so, that came up then. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, and this whole program is based around exactly what I did, right. and um, you know, I, I'm I'm putting sort of every single message that I ever learned in there, uh, recipes that I've played around with for the past yep. eight years. Right. Um, so. Yeah, I guess, I mean, coming on Henshi Stowe is one thing and a few quick messages and people might think, okay, I get the gist of that, I've heard some of that before, but to get that detail, it's Slim Sumo, that's what they, where they need to go, is, is that right? And where do they get that information? Is, do you have a website? I or? have a website, yeah, it's slimsumo.co.uk. Um, I also have um, a Facebook page, which right. is, again, Slim Sumo. Everything's under Slim Sumo, so my Facebook page and group, Instagram, right. and Twitter. 
um, YouTube channel also has some recipes and workout challenges. Brilliant, kind of brilliant. So that's what you need to do. Just type in Slim Sumo, whatever social media you're on, and you'll get all the details um, on Chan's journey and some hints and tips as to where to start, the struggles you might have, what to cook, what not to cook, that sort of thing. Is that right? Absolutely. Okay, now one last thing, and it's very quickly now. You have a competition for our listeners. That's really exciting. I do, yeah. I launched my first recipe book this morning. Um, and it's focused on vegetarian recipes that are very rich in protein. I'm vegetarian. Yeah, yeah, me too. So, I mean, this is the thing I learned a lot through my journey was protein is so important. And we as vegetarians don't think, I don't think we eat enough of it. So the book is focused, 50 recipes on foods that have a lot of protein content. So the competition is, yeah, it's on my Facebook page and I think you're, it's going to be on. That's right, yeah, definitely. I'll put the competition and what they, everyone needs to do on Hansi's Facebook page as well. Don't forget to like Hansi's page, of course. Um, we'll have lots of more special guests here on my show as well, so make sure you do that. And, of course, uh, like Slim Sumo's page as well. We'll keep it all fair here. And, um, yeah, the competition. Uh, you've t you mentioned a, a little bit about it, but I think we're going to have they're going to have to go onto my page to read more details on that. I think because we've just got a couple of more minutes left. Now, any special shout outs? Uh, I know you've mentioned to a few friends and family that you're coming here today. Yeah, I'm, uh, my daughter's listening at home. Very Aww. excited to hear mommy on the radio. Hi, Kieran. Uh, <laughs> uh, my, she's with uh, with uh, my husband, and uh, my parents and my uncle are in India at the moment. So are they listening from they're India? Listening, they're listening in India. Oh, good old online radio <laughs> station. Fantastic. Uncle and auntie. My niece is listening from Australia, and. Um, I have a lot of uh, people that have signed up for the packages already that are in India. and I mean, it's a global because it's online all over the world. Yeah, absolutely. It's that, this is the thing, isn't it? Anything online, you can catch it wherever you like. We have run out of time now. I hope you enjoyed today's show, this special show with our special guest, Chan. Thank you very much for coming and joining Hansi today. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Now, until next Thursday, from